Welcome back. My name is Malian and this is Xenonauts X Division. Okay. Uh, sending you over here. So we are back from our first mission. We had one lucky survivor. Uh, research is still ongoing. We have a very small. Okay, that is interesting. One very small. Never saw these. Okay, an invasion. You've probably already noticed we are being invaded, Commander. It seems things are up to us. My team stand ready to help. There may only be a handful of us, but some of the finest minds on the planet. The glimmer of hope remains. The alien craft seem poorly suited to atmospheric flight. Our interceptors may enjoy some early success against the superior extra terrestrial vessels simply due to better adaption to the combat environment. This may explain the appearance of only relatively small craft in the skies above our planet. I have two recommendations. That we consider supplementing our existing F-17 Condor aircraft with a heavier interceptor capable of carrying more powerful weapons and that we investigate some form of battlefield support vehicle to aid our soldiers when securing crash alien craft. Okay. Icelandic incident start. Welcome to X Division Commander. We face tough times and it is more important than ever to collect knowledge and resources. Don't forget the knowledge. I mean, I will mostly do that for you, but it's important that you sense your senses stay sharp and open for the oncoming challenges as our commander. Speaking of which, we managed to gather good funds for our project, but don't overestimate your income. Our predictions are that we will slowly run dry as the alien invasion progresses, cutting off economic trade routes and bombing our planet. We should get some good coverage over most of the globe pretty quickly. I'd suggest building two to three bases immediately to have them ready when we need them. We can always refrain from upgrading them later, but fully equipping a functional base takes around a month, time we might not have. Spend our funds wisely and always look for opportunities to learn. It's the only effective weapon we have, Commander. A quick summary of knowledge and resources. Knowledge is gained through research and research topics become available as resources are gathered. Our prerequisite research is completed. Research resources include items such as weapons, dead bodies, wrecks, downed or landed UFOs, claimed, and even live captives, which you are unlikely to be able to collect without dedicated means to subdue them. Live captives are extremely important in the long run, but don't get soldiers killed needlessly early on. You will get plenty of opportunities in most cases. Resources are gained through claiming down UFOs and dismantling disassembly. Items collected. And note that item collecting from a claimed UFO is automatic. Items left on the battlefield are collected when the UFO is claimed. While retreating from a fight, that's too hard. Basically, only collect what soldiers carry. We have some basic armor, armor price 20 reflexes, side range of 18 and view count of 160. Trade defense against aliens, once we have captured, we have a medical center, state of the art. Bidding additional medical centers beyond the first has no extra effect. Radar arrays, uh, radio arrays can be expanded by bidding three times. We get some stuff, we get 50 personnel, a storeroom, a single storeroom is capable of holding an unlimited quantity of items. Laboratory, uh, the first scientist on the project works at 100% efficiency, the second at 99, and so forth. Finally, as laboratories are expensive and have un unusually high maintenance costs, consider your finances carefully before bidding one. Workshop is the same diminishing return, garage, each garage will hold for three. Defense battery is point defense structure that provides your base with protection against UFOs. In the event that your base is attacked by enemy forces, 
Your defense batteries will each take a shot at the attacking craft with a 50% hit chance before the ground assault begins. Several defense batteries might be able, may be able to destroy an attacking UFO before it lands, averting the attack completely. But inflicting any damage on the UFO and at all will reduce the size of the alien ground force appropriately to a minimum of 50%. These batteries upgrade automatically as you research more advanced weapon technologies. The avalanche uh, torpedo, we have some ballistic UR basic, one of the ballistic pistol, mass produced and ready available. Things are used to die when you pointed one of these at them. Until those things stopped being people and started being aliens. Give one of these to your shield handlers so they feel like they're part of the team and don't try to do a weird them. They're just childish. Shotgun. Uh, we aren't sure how effective these pellets will be against the enemy armor or hide or whatever. It can be noted that the expanding pellets of a shotgun cause a shock effect when the target is injured, resulting in the victim having to use a number of time units to recover at the beginning of the next turn. Ballistic rifle, moderate range, moderate stopping power. It can be fired at 3 pro okay. The rifle uh, can make the most of your ac soldier's accuracy if they have any anyways. No burst, burst fire. Heavy machine gun. Um, this heavy machine gun is what defines the phrase spray and pray. And that's exactly what you should expect when you use it. Though it isn't so easy to use as some of the other weapons. Firstly, the heavy machine gun is exactly what it says, heavy. You'd better have a rather brawny soldier carry this thing, or they won't be able to hold it while it's firing. Second, it takes a few minutes to set the weapon up prior to firing, extending the leg, inserting the clip, bracing the weapon, which means that there's no time to be running around. If you make a soldier move before, prior to firing a heavy weapon like this, expect your accuracy to drop significantly. Rocket launcher. The rocket launcher itself is a simple tube with a basic aiming apparatus and a triggering system. It's the rockets themselves that are interesting. So long as they adhere to the specifications for rocket ammunition, we will be able to fire them with the system. Who knows what amazing rockets we will develop as we backward engineer the alien technology. Speaking of alien technology, you should be aware that explosions tend to not to leave intact hardware behind. So if you are hoping to recover any of the alien goodies, you may want to steer clear of explosive ammunition. C4 is such a stable explosive. It won't go off if you drop it or even if you light it on fire, which is exactly why it shows to give it to those cretins in the barracks for use on their mission. Now I should mention that we have no idea how effective it's going to be as a weapon, seeing as we know so little about the alien's ability to withstand explosive shockwaves. So you are going to have to lob a few their way to report back. I, deem, I do mean lob, Commander. You aren't going to want to be anywhere near the, an exploding C4 charge, I, assume, I assure you. You may not know the alien resistances, but we sure as heck know what the human resistance to explosives is. None. No resistance whatsoever. If one of, the, of them manages to arm a C4 charge and not throw it, or if the... Or if you don't throw it far enough, boom, dead team. Be very careful. Should you ever consider to toss one of these out of the back of one of your troop transports, Commander? We have a sidebinder. Uh, we will just have to try and see. As a suggestion, you may want to send out planes equipping this with this weapon sorties of two to three planes. If a few missiles aren't enough to do the job, perhaps a dozen or so will. Uh, Same we have in fact. If not, there's always a possibility of using this. The F-17. Uh, send them in groups if you hope to have its chance. Let's keep this. We didn't buy this plane, we borrowed it. And France is going to be mighty unhappy if we find... Okay, and Chinook. It's a helicopter, not a rocket ship, so plan accordingly. Hopefully we will have a more robust transport platform available in the near future. 
but for now this is it. Okay. We can now research the hunter scout vehicle, which we do. Our troops need some armored backup in the field, but Sana tanks are too heavy to transport by Shinook. We're going to look into modifying a Daimler ferret to achieve this. They should be capable of bringing heavy cal caliber machine guns into the battle and possible rocket mountings in the future. You can thank me later. So Light Scout is a highly maneuverable alien craft. Uh, scouting. Picking this Light Scout uh, clean in our research, we came up with a protocol for extracting further components beyond those readily removable for the craft which it is recovered. Unless destroyed. Unfortunately, devising the disassembly protocol isn't a perfect process, so the try and error involved by destroying the Light Scout. Scouting missions. Hello, Commander. Earlier today, confirmed sighting of a UFO. They do scouting missions. Sabine autopsy. Sabine is a reptilian alien. Okay, with up to an inch uh, scaled height in places, these creatures have some inherent protection against ballistic weapons and seem resilient to flames, which makes it rather more difficult to dispose of. So they uh, are a little bit uh, more protective against ballistic. Hence the scales are sick, okay, heavy skeleton, heavy resistance to damage, How however, highly energized heat seems quite effective in penetrating it. Once we abandoned our bone source for an angle grinder, we revealed the internal organs, much expected. Uh, beast body, Sabine blood also has some interesting results, almost 10% of blood volume. A mixture of powerful coagulants and unspecialized stem cells. We do not yet fully understand. There are also now indicating that there is a resistance to chemicals. There are also indications. Mm, okay. So yeah, some consolation. Despite the above, the beings are not perfect soldiers, much like the brutes down in our engineering department. Their physique bears, uh, bellies an undersized brain. A Sabine probably has an, as much understanding of squad tactics as it, as it does the finer points of Shakespeare. They also have weak thermal eyesight, giving them slow reflexes and pure accuracy. They will prefer to fight at short ranges, where these characteristics are less of a hindrance, so it would be wise to ensure the opponent the... the yeah, whatever. Sends the Irex. So don't fight close range. Got it. Manufacturing and Disassembling System, DSB. Welcome to the Forge. Here we are capable of disassembling. If you get new alien weapons, you can disassemble them for parts. Resources extraction can be uh, used in order to obtain re useful resources from aliens. Note that various DSB protocols are essential for our progress. It's very few items we can make without access to alien resources. So we really need to bring those back and process them so that the resources are available when we need them. By only partially tied to the forge, we also should mention live alien specimen for interrogation of a section. Interrogation will provide us with information about alien technology necessary to advance those studies. By vivid section will provide two benefits. The first one is that each captive case studied will provide us with a small improvement in our combat effectiveness against that race. And the second one is that it will allow us to extract resources from the alien case's armor. Autopsy of dead specimen will provide us with extraction protocols for extracting resources from damaged armor. Also, the damage will cause less resources to be gained from the armor than the, from the armor of live captives. And in the case of enemies, only live captives can provide useful resources. Finally, the process of devising disassembly protocols is destructive. Good. Still researching the hunter. Sabine Guard. Sabine Guard is not much different on the inside compared to any other civilians. They are a little larger and stronger than the civilians, who are neither small nor weak by any means, with a green height and are equipped with an armored vest. 
Ultimately, the Sibian guard body is of little consequence and has to be cremated, but the armor, while damaged by the process killing the creature, can still be used to extract light fiber. We are able to extract one light fiber for each Sibian guard recovered. We have yet to find a use for light fibers, but given how effective they are in protecting aliens, it would make logical sense to incorporate them into improved armor of our own design. Sibian non-combatant analysis. Commander our Xeno Xenosociologist has been compiling information on the Sibian race. Most of it, while interesting, is irrelevant for field operations. I have taken the time to compose a summary of the most useful information for the man. I'm sure you've heard the self con Congratulations and backslapping going on in the locker room over the success of the last mission. I hate to turn those mice into frowns, actually I don't, but many of those hard targets were amusingly enough not intended for ground co operations. From our data, we have strong reason to believe a sizable number of subjects recovered are non-combatants. They form the operational core for any UFO crew acting as pilots, engineers, navigators and other essential non-combatant roles. They neither, neither need nor are given more than basic training in combat, are armed with pistols or rifles at the most and only have their naked if resilient skin as protection. Incidentally, I have had to chastise some lab assistants from skinning the beans and selling the hides to your men. Did you know your, that Corpory England is an amateur leather worker? I should check their uniforms if I were you. Our xenosociologists theorize they are either a slave case, cast bred in their millions to serve the needs of the higher echelons, or younglings who have yet to find their position within the larger social group, and are assigned duties suitable for young, young, wow, young aspirants who cannot yet be trusted with a gun. It is extremely unlikely that the man will see them in any dedicated in combat operation role apart from their service roles. Still, they will kill you in one shot. AM Biology. Tissue analysis of the remains of different extraterrestrial species has allowed us to compare them with one another. Find, okay. There are strong similarities in the physiolo physiology of all biological alien units encountered so far, for example, all are humanoid. All, all also possess both a circulatory system and central nervous system. Okay, this allows the possibility of common planetary origin. The huge variety of life on our own planet clearly illustrates that an array of vastly different creatures can evolve simultaneously on a single planet. This was our initial assumption largely to the shared habitat, and uh, okay, uh, see, da -da. however, the fundamental organic chemistry is so dramatically, dramatically different between A and species that a common origin cannot be possible. The reason these species can share a common habitat is not evolution, but rather extensive genetic engineering. This oxy oxygen carrying protein bears, bears no resemblance to any other part of any of the corpses studied. In other words, it appears an external force has engineered these creatures to be capable of breathing the same air that they do. The, the identity of these, this eternal external force and the resonating reasoning behind this decision remain obscure. In the meantime, research picture use, my team have constructed holding tanks. Okay, so we can now capture aliens? Question mark? Can we capture aliens? Nope. Okay, we got more soldiers and more scientists. Um, get the scout car. I need that. There we go. Good evening. So here is our outer layers initially were very flimsy. Blah, blah, blah. Unable to carry much more. Also, as a final thought, Command, I would try to steer clear of using the figure once we inevitably get a new, more suitable combat base replacement. But it is cheap, which is one of the reasons I am using that. 
Um, let's get the ballistic rifle, very akin to our own assault rifle. Let's take it apart and see what we can make use of. And you are making the hunter scout car. Uh, how long until my hunger slot is there? Two days. Okay. Aim ballistic rifle. The aim ballistic rifle is very similar in principle to our own rifles with a similar battlefield usage. For some reason the weapons use uh, authorization interval for this weapon is six shots rather than the four used by the aim ballistic pistol. It may well be that the interval interval is based on the actions possible within a single battlefield turn. We cannot use the best uh, ballistic rifle ourselves, but we can pick it apart for parts. Okay, we get some stuff. Once we have examined its reader, as well as the ballistic pistol, we should have enough information to launch research into alien ballistic technology, so we need to capture whoever is carrying that and the ballistic pistol. Good to know. Flame rifle is similar to our terrestrial flamethrower, so more compact and designed with enough analysis, I'm sure. We will gain an understanding of how it, how they operate. Launch interceptor, AVAX, a small UFO, send the planes, come back. This pe peculiar weapon is capable of hurling flame bo flaming bolts of at great distances apart from the peculiar bullets. It operates as a rifle capable of both burst and single shot modes. And alien alloys. I've read our your reports from the battlefield about alien hull and weapon durability and have finally okay. It's about vital absolutely vital that we understand those material. Just think commander what we could uh, construct. Not to mention the noble prize. Okay, I will stop here. Next episode we will get to that UFO and we will launch another ground mission. So stay tuned, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.